Welcome back to another episode of The Grace Between Us. We are on episode number 60. Episode Six number 60. Zero. I'm Pastor Lori. And I'm Pastor Nathan. And today we're going to talk about the coronavirus. Ooh. So stay, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back with a few thoughts about the global pandemic that is the coronavirus. All right, well, we're back today talking about a very serious topic, but I think something that's maybe gotten a little blown out of proportion here as of late, the coronavirus. Any and, virus or anything that you could like catch people oh my gosh. get crazy about. Well, I mean, there's obviously some concern. Is, uh, China, less than one, less than, it's like 0.001% of their population has has the coronavirus. So it's a very small portion. And of that small portion, a very small portion has actually died from it. Uh, in our country here, I think there's still only like 15 or 16 cases. Nobody's died of it. Uh, around the world, they're not seeing huge spikes in coronavirus uh, compared to their global population. And again, deaths are even smaller than that. But, but I'll tell you what. We're thinking about I, I know I've thought about it. Like, oh, I know. Hmm, what do I do? I what need do we to do, do something yeah. to, the, you know, keep well, my family safe. And the media is acting like the world's on fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you read or listen to the news and I'm not telling you to be irresponsible, but no. let's be reasonable right now. The flu, the seasonal flu is killing more people in this country than the coronavirus. Yeah. So get your flu shot, you know, do, do, do what's responsible. You know, what or if you don't get shots and you're an anti-vaxxer, then don't get a shot. I'm not getting into that today. No, we're not discussing uh, that. Today. But yeah, that's not the point of this. <laughs> uh, but the issue is, you know, we have this media, this cycle, uh, the world that we live in tends to blow things crazy out of proportion. Now, could the coronavirus go nuts and kill half yeah. the world's population? Yeah, the plague happened, yeah. right? So that could happen. Uh, is it likely? No. no. Uh, I just went through an article today that in less than three weeks, Israel will have a vaccine ready to go for the coronavirus. Wow. I'm sure they will share with the rest of the world, even those who are firing rockets on them right now, they'll share with them too, because uh, the media will definitely not want to pay Israel as the good guys. They'll want to pay them as the bad guys. But when you create a virus and you share with your enemies, mm. or would you create, I'm sorry, a vaccine to a virus and you share it with your enemies, you're not a bad guy. So like as a Christian, you know, we have, these things come up in life, yeah. viruses, you know. This well, it was the swine of, flu, it yeah, was Y2K. Always been I mean, there's always something. been something. And there's somebody that'll pr prey on that fear. Yep. Even Christians, there's Christian people right now, you know, give us $200 for your no anointment oil and you won't catch coronavirus. <laughs> the holy you know? water. That's right. It's ridiculous. Come on. Uh, I, I'm all for prayer and I'm all for, you know, anointing them with oil as the Bible says. However, I'm not all for paying some charlatan, you know, an extra 250 bucks out of your pocket so that you maybe won't catch the coronavirus when you sprinkle some oil so, on your head. You know, what is the root of all of that? It just becomes down to fear. That's right. We it's have, all fear. we hear this, we hear the media, and then all of a sudden we're struck with fear. Yep. And as a Christian, what are you supposed to do with that? Are you supposed to be, you know, bunkered down in your house so you can't meet anyone or see anyone so you can't get it? Is that what's wise? No. Or, you know, what do we do? How do we respond to this fear that they are just pushing at us? So in our context right now, again, if it's, if you're, if you're worried about the coronavirus, it could be the fear of contagion and that you could mm -hmm. get it. And that in getting the virus, you know, there could be some real issues. Um, the early church faced much greater, much greater fears. The government at large from where the early church came out of was not just persecuting them and like putting them in prison, mm -hmm. but it was literally killing them, putting them in the lion's den, putting them in the Colosseum uh, to fight one another and to fight animals and to fight the gladiators and to ultimately get murdered for show. Mm -hmm. uh, so we act like, you know, oh, the coronavirus, you know, I need all kinds of, you know, uh, I, I think we need to take ourselves into some context and historical context, right? Not saying that you should be irresponsible responsible, wash your hands, mm -hmm. sneeze into your elbow, you know, do all the things that we're told to do. Um, you know, uh, stay away from people who are sick. If you're sick, stay home, you know, get prayer and all that kind of good thing, but stay home uh, if you're sick. Uh, but you know, other than that, like we can't let ourselves be driven by fear. Again, the early church had major reasons to fear. They had major reason, reasons to be in hiding. We don't. What I think of is, you know, when we have fear, ultimately, many times it comes down to anxiety. Yeah. And then what is anxiety? Anxiety is the fear of the unknown. That's right. You don't know what you don't know. That's right. And so when we educate ourselves, learn a little bit more about it, then those fears tend to go away because like, okay, I'm educated. I understand mm -hmm. the next steps. I know what we can do to keep yeah. our family safe. I see what's happening, you know, out there. But I think oftentimes what we don't know, it becomes our biggest detriment. You know, and 
we as Americans have to take pleasure in the idea that we live in the greatest country on the planet and that we still have the greatest medical force on the planet. I mean, obviously Israel's doing something right because they're creating this this uh, vaccine for this virus pretty quickly. And I don't think that we wouldn't create it. I feel like we have a few more loopholes to go through, um, but that's a different side story. But if we're if you're going to be sick anywhere in the world, it should be here. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I've been blessed. there. I was in Africa just two weeks before the Ebola breakout, right? Mm-hmm. Which was, again, in another global pandemic, it was going to wipe out the world and blah, 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 blah. And, and I was there two weeks before the break. And not, not intentionally. It's not like I timed no. it that way. Uh, but we came back just in time. And, you know, we didn't we didn't have any issues from that. I could have lived in fear in that mm-hmm. window, right? So that window is probably more of not two weeks. It's probably more of a couple months that the virus was floating around. Right. I could have totally lived in fear in the idea that I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch right. Ebola. I was there. I, and I was in the hotbed, too. I was in Sierra Leone, like yeah. the hotbed, where it started, where it all broke out from. And I have no worry at all that anything was going to be wrong with me, with my family, with anyone I was around. I had no fear at all. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he yeah. that's in the world. Like, I'm not worried about what's going on out there. Now, I'm not saying that we don't get sick from time to time. I'm not saying that we don't have issues. Yeah. Yeah. And and let's be real honest. You know, people, well, this is the attack of the enemy. Listen, the devil will kill you with a hangnail if he could. (laughs) Like, not everything's the attack of the devil. It's a virus and viruses spread. Now, you could take that all the way down to original sin and all that. I'm I'm not trying to get in that theological debate with you. However, it's not the enemy imposing his will on you again. Because if he could, trying to teach you, you yeah, know, or right? God trying to teach you, by or, or God, this. yeah, or God trying to teach you faith by, you know, you you exposed sin. to the you're, sin, you're exposed so to the coronavirus. Have, yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Let's be Stop honest, it. right? Yeah, <laughs> let's be honest. The devil is not pushing the coronavirus. You don't have to pray against the devil, uh, other than the generic idea of sickness. And again, God's not trying to punish anyone. He's not punishing uh, China because they, you know, they worship Buddha or whatever, whatever they worship over there. We're not. He's not punishing a group of people. It is what it is. It is a virus. They happen to come and go in our human uh, experience. And again, we could take it all the way down the original sin. I don't want to do that today. But the point is, don't get so caught up in super spiritual mumbo jumbo that you, you're like no earthly good to anybody. Understand Preach. the authority you have as the believer. Mm-hmm. You, as a believer, you are in Jesus Christ. You have authority under that blood. You have a authority to say, my, not my family, not yeah. here, not today, devil. We're not going to accept it. And if by chance, for some reason, you found yourself sick, there's still authority that you take over that sickness and mm-hmm. you battle through it, yep. right? So let's be real honest. There's no reason to fear. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be responsible, right? right? And I'm not saying we shouldn't uh, take diseases as they come for what they are and take appropriate measures. That's not what we're saying. What I'm saying is that's not a reason to live in a constant state mm-hmm. of fear. Dude, around here, we live in the Midwest. If you don't know where we live, we live in the middle of Iowa, and we get snow <laughs> all the time. Of in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. No, it's actually pretty, pretty, pretty nice area yeah. we live in. Uh, but anyway, there's, there's snow all the time, right? Every year there's going to be snow. That first snow comes, yeah. and people drive like it's the apocalypse. The Walmart shelves are cleared out. There's, it's going to snow. It's going to snow five inches. Milk, eggs, and bread. I know, right? And it's all gone, right? Like the power's going to go out for weeks. <laughs> it's never happened. Even in the worst ice storms and snowstorms we've ever had, power has never gone out for months and months and months. It's gone out for some time, and some people have been, you know, displaced from their homes because of it. But we've never had this widespread panic necessary or need for this widespread panic. Why? Because the world we live in is just way more advanced than that. Mm -hmm. And again, snow happens every year. Sickness happens every year. The flu happens every year. Some pandemic is on the horizon every year. Come on, people. We don't have to worry. We serve a good God who has good intentions for you. He wants to keep you mm-hmm. safe and whole and healthy. Have faith that he will. Yep. Come Amen. on. Hallelujah. Man, we've yeah. actually missed a few weeks or a few episodes uh, because I had stuff going on in our life, man. Just be real honest. And sometimes stuff overtakes your schedule and it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to. <laughs> well, uh, but back. we're back on track. And things will go pretty smooth. Um, Again, if there's something you'd like to talk about, let us know and we will cover those topics uh, as they come. We will definitely love to hear your feedback, any ideas that you have about what you'd like us to talk about. That's right. Um, Obviously, the coronavirus, it's just what's happening. So we want to talk about real life. 
real stuff. So many times in our Christian faith, you know, we're blessed and highly flavored and can't talk about <laughs> real the real life stuff because we're we're above that. No, we live in this world. Live in the, this world. So we have to know how to live deal with life as it comes authentically yeah. together yeah. with those around us and to be a great representation of Jesus Christ experiencing Jesus in everyday life come on well we love you guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time